I, it, there, there's something about them. There's something about these reds and you are locked on reds, your daily Cincinnati reds podcast, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. You are Locked On Reds. Thanks for making Locked On Reds your first listen of the day. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. We are free and available on all podcasting platforms, including YouTube. I'm your host, Stephen Offenbaker. That guy's Jeff Carr, and we are diehard baseball fans. We have a passion for the Cincinnati Reds. We have taken our love of the game, our passion for baseball, and we have turned that passion into information for you. We want to thank Those of you who listen every day, if you are an everydayer, let us know in the comment section. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, On today's podcast, we are going to react to the old red legs being swept down in Atlanta, losing their major league leading fifth baseball game by one run as the bullpen blew another one, Jeff. And... uh, I can I could hear the frustration from you when you logged on to get ready to do the show. It was apparent there in your cold open. How are you feeling, my friend? I just it it, it they they're there, right? They're they're right. I, I can see the light. Four four the, runs on the favorite to go to the World Series in the National League. You know, I'm telling one of you, the top like, two or three favorites. <laughs> it's that's the thing, is is that they have not been out of any of these games. We we thought that, you know, the Reds facing the NL East. The NL East is obviously the best division. The Braves are the team that's won it for five years in a row. The Phillies are a team that is in contention for it, and they spend so much money to make sure that they're in contention for it on their roster. They have all these different all-stars. The Reds faced all these guys, and they were in every game. And it was it was one pitch here or there. It was it was one walk here or there. It was one just just they're so close. And, and I I feel like anyone who seems to have optimism about this team is just hurting right now because man they they give it to you they they hand you the optimism and right before you take it from their hand. They just they take it right back because the, the, the lineup's there. Hunter Green took a step. We we got a lot to talk about where his performance is concerned. We got some good injury news for a possible relief pitcher. Now he's not necessarily close, but it's still good news. But uh, all of it comes after they've been swept and they finish a road trip one and five, and a road trip that they probably should have been three and three on. I mean. Maybe. Maybe four and two. The, maybe four and two. You take back the uh, the ninth inning debacle in Philadelphia. You take back Derek Law's one pitch, and it's a pretty um, drastic change to this road trip. And I think I'm with you in that these are the kinds of situations that really just hit you harder. Uh, this is a team that while we didn't expect them to be in playoff contention, uh, Quite honestly, the the way they've been hitting has been a lot better than I expected them to hit to start the season. So, you know, I think they're missing. These are the games they've got to win. They needed to build this win total early and as many as possible in April, given the schedule that Major League Baseball threw at them. And I, I just start to feel like when you let one, when you let two, when you let more than two, now we're at five one run games. When you let those kind of games slip away from you, it's just harder and harder to recover. You know, seasons can be won and lost in April. And, you know, if it comes down to, you know, the end of the season and there are two or three wins off of that 70 win total that you've been harping. I mean, you have to come back and point to games like what we just witnessed games. Like we saw in the extra inning game games, like we saw when Philadelphia won in the bottom walk off style, those are the games you come back to. And you have to ask yourself, you know, at what point does the reds front office acknowledge what we've all been saying since last year, that the bullpen is the really the only thing keeping them from being relevant the only thing 
and, and, and it continues to be that way. I mean, Hunter Green pitched magnificently. This wasn't a case like Luis Sessa really put the Reds in a team, the, put the Reds in a bind in game two, and the lineup still fought through that and still gave them a chance to win. And then the bullpen kind of blew it for from there. Hunter Green pitched well. He had a quality start, six innings, three runs allowed. He did give up seven hits. You'd love to see that come down, but zero walks. And oh, by the way, he struck out 10 people. Let's mention that as well. Struck out 10 people, walked nobody. This is the kind of start we can expect from Hunter Green moving forward. That He has the stuff to be a every fifth day, quality start, lots of strikeouts kind of guy. And the way that he was able to set the Reds up for success in this one was just awesome. But then you, you, you have Ian Jubo come in and quickly right away, bingo, bango, bongo, walk in a hit, and he already gave up a run. And then Buck Farmer gives up his one home run. His first home run, by the way, since, what was it, June of April. last year? A April of April last year, that, yeah. going back 46, 46 innings, yeah. Like, and, and, and there's no, you're not supposed to take solace in the fact that he gone a whole year without giving up a home run. And oh, by the way, he just happened to give up the one home run that makes them lose a game. Like that's not, we're not saying that is like, Oh, by the way, look at this. You're wrong to be negative. But on the other end of this, it's like so many weird fluky things keep happening. And you mentioned that stat five, one run losses. Now, if this were five, one run wins, do you know what people say about a team like that? They're lucky, right? You, you, you talk about a team that is just loaded with one run wins and you're like, it's just going to take a, a tip one way or the other. And this team could go crazy. Right? So same argument right here. You tip the reds the right way. They could go crazy in a good way. I, I just, I see it. I see it, Steve. And that is why I'm so frustrated. I want to let's be careful with that, though. This the, the bullpen situation is not bad luck. The bullpen situation is poor yeah. planning on the part of the front office uh, because there's nobody that follows this team for the last two years that hasn't pointed right at that bullpen group and said that's where the fix needs to happen. And yeah. the Reds just simply haven't done it. So uh, well, I want to be careful with that. Uh, you're right. If, if they had won five one run games, you're right. Everybody will say, oh, they're just lucky. You're absolutely right about that. But that's not why they're losing these one-run games. I do want to say this about Hunter Green. Uh, and all of those great stats, and Cowboy touched on this on the television broadcast, uh, what we saw from Hunter Green was him getting in trouble at times. And what I liked was watching him battle through it, not giving up, keeping the Reds in the game, continuing to push forward. And, and like Cowboy said, those are the moments that Hunter Green will learn from. And he has to he has to be given the opportunity to continue to pitch when the situation turns bad. And and kudos to David Bell for leaving him in there for uh, as long as he did and learning how to overcome the adversity. Uh, the thing with Ian Jabot, this bullpen, Jeff, this this <laughs> walks will haunt this always uh, never knowing it is just so one extreme or the other. You just never know. And it, it's not player to player. It's day to day with the same player. One day, you know, Ian Jabot comes out and, and looks pretty good. Like he could be a seventh inning guy. And then today he comes out and, you know, it was shades of Jeff Hoffman out there. And I just don't, <laughs> I just, it's Ooh. so frustrating. It's just so, it is, it's so frustrating because the, the offensive group of players, the, the position players, and we're going to get into them in the next segment, are just so much fun to watch right now. Yes. It, is, it is a good time to tune into the Reds game, even with all of these one-run losses, even with all of these bullpen debacles. Watching this group of players hit, and I know that the bottom half of the lineup has kind of started to show itself, uh, but there's replacements for those guys coming, and we know it. We've talked about this. So the, the guys that are performing right now are so much fun to watch watch yes and that is where i want to go to next because there is reason like if if you're looking at the score and if you're looking at the win loss record and you're thinking same old reds it's not these are fun games and i, I know they ended up losing but if you are a a diehard reds fan you're going to be hurt by the losses but if you can watch it objectively and watch it like a baseball game the reds are super fun to watch right now and the biggest reason why is the lineup. We'll tell you why coming up next. 
Before we get into that, though, I want to tell you about one of today's sponsors, and that is eBay Motors. You know, if you're looking for the next part for your car, uh, the championship team has all of that, all of the right parts, and they know exactly how to make every part and every player a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game. When you shop at eBay Motors, it's that way as well. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Thanks for checking out today's Locked On Reds podcast. Thank you so much. We love talking Reds with you. And I know that right now these Reds are a, a frustrating bunch, but they're a fun bunch. And it's fun to talk about them. So make sure you join us here in the comments section on YouTube, or you can hit us up on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me at Jeff Carr with three Fs, and you can follow Steve at S. Offenbaker with two Fs. As we talk Reds in between each and every episode, but we're also talking it right here because, my friend, the, the Reds are a lot of fun right now because they are in every game. What do we say about facing a guy like Spencer Strider? This was a test. This was to see, can this lineup that really put it to Kyle Wright whenever he was barely in the game at all in the game in the second game, when they faced the Pirates pitching staff of misfit toys, and when they faced some of the Phillies guys that were coming off some bad starts and some, some guys who were replacing, there, there's all these different excuses. They faced Spencer Strider and they came out with a respectable game. They did. And and let's t let's just start with the first four guys in that's this lineup. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> and let, let's let's start right there. Let's let's just kind of run through this real quick. Jonathan India currently hitting 310. TJ Friedel, who I want to spend some time talking about, three for four, now batting 350. Jake Fraley had an over and is still hitting 333. And then Tyler Stevenson, who was one for three with a walk and a couple RBIs, is hitting 293. That is a great one, two, three, four punch this lineup has got yeah. right now. Uh, let's talk a little bit about TJ Friedel. Uh, if you are not on board the TJ Friedel train at this point, you may have missed it because he is clearly in this thing for real. I am I, comfortable in saying that he should just be the everyday center fielder yeah. and let's just roll with that. I think Will Benson's days are numbered as far as being on this roster, as people start getting healthy down in Louisville. Uh, I really think that TJ Friedel has, has played and earned the right to be starter a number one center fielder for the Cincinnati Reds. I 100% agree with you. And it, it's not just in the fact that he's had, you know, a, a nice, uh, couple number of multi-hit games here it's when you watch him at the plate he doesn't look overmatched and it's something that you talk about a lot something we we talk about a lot on this is that you can tell when a guy's at the plate and maybe he's just throwing his bat at the ball and seeing what happens like tj friedel knows exactly what he wants to do he'll put down a bunt and uh you know try and beat it out or advance the runners but he's going to put the bunt in the perfect spot and because of that, defenses have to account for it. So he is in their heads in, in a day and age where you can't shift like you would in years past. He is the one that's causing them to refocus how they move around within the rules of keeping two guys on each side of second base. But then he can uncork one too. Like the, the, the different avenues with which TJ Friedel can attack a pitcher is just so phenomenal. And he is the first guy that I thought of in this game because a guy like Spencer Strider who can mix it up with a very high velocity fastball and a slider that just snaps. Like that's the kind of guy that I'm like, all right, he might expose TJ Friedel a little bit. And the opposite happened. Like TJ Friedel exposed Spencer Strider. 
And the fact you, you talk about those numbers, all of them above, or, you know, T, uh, Tyler Stevenson just below 300, but the top three guys above 300. And then let's also throw in a guy who got the off day. He did have a pinch hit appearance, but Spencer Steer, he's batting above 300 as well. We talked about him yesterday being the perfect guy to back up Tyler Stevenson in the fifth spot, at least until Will Myers kind of gets going a little bit, or if we get Joey Votto up here and he gets going a little bit, but you're right. Like that top, the top four of the Reds order just has to give every pitcher fits whenever they look at it. Now, yeah, the bottom half, not so much, but we saw just how good they can be today against a really good pitcher. You know, your point about what TJ Friedel does to the defense uh, is not lost on me, Jeff. Uh, Bally took a shot at some point during one of TJ Friedel's at bats, and it was the camera from directly behind home plate that's kind of mounted up on the screen right. looking out over the defense, and they were playing him straight up. No, no shifting at all. And I know that, you know, players can move right up to basically second base, but they were playing true standard straight up infield defense because you have to respect what he's able to do. And, I, you know, I, that really does have an impact on the game. As far as what we're seeing from the other, you know, guys at the top of the lineup, I could not be more impressed with the the reinvented Jonathan India. Uh, I'm going to continue to shout that out. Yes. He is really, you know, taking his game back to where it needs to be and and the dividends are just showing right there on the field. We've we've spent a lot of time talking about Jake Fraley. Uh I'm really think that he just should play every day until he proves that he cannot. He he has to be in there. And then our boy Tyler Stevenson, the power hasn't come along and you know, I was on the super high side touting that you know, he could be a, a big bopper. He could be a 30 to 40 home run guy. And the power hasn't come in yet. And I, I hope that it does. I hope that uh, he becomes more of a, a home run hitter and less of a, of a doubles guy. But as long as he's getting on base right now, driving in runs, I'll take them however I can get them. You know, those are the positives. And I wanted to talk about the positives first because the rest of this lineup is really struggling right now. A lot of guys are showing their true selves. Uh, I'm not worried about Will Myers. I think he's yeah. going to hit. He's going to come around. Everybody else gives me pause. Um, Jose Barrero has been kind of showing us something and then goes out and goes 0 for 4 today. Now, he was facing a, a pretty good pitcher on the mound today. So, you know, take that into account when you're talking about his 0 for 4. Two of those 0 were strikeout, so he didn't strike out every time. Mm -hmm. uh, did put the ball in play at least, but I'm still not 100% in on him. Uh, where I do have some concern, though, is uh, with Jason Vossler. I think that, you know, he was one of those stories that, you know, it was a great first week. It was fun to talk about, you know, the whole thing with the initials, the new JV is here, wh whatever you wanted <laughs> right. to do with that. But, you know, we've seen this before. We've seen players throughout baseball history that come and have an amazing first week and then you never hear from them again. I still remember from when I was a kid, the Cubs had a guy named Tuffy Rhodes that hit three <laughs> home runs in each of the first two or three games of the season and then like never hit another one after that. Like it, you know, those storylines happen. It's baseball. Baseball is going to baseball. So uh, I'm ready for Joey Votto to get up here. I was asked and, and you were asked online today. Uh, do we think we'll see Joey Votto? He has about a week left on his rehab assignment, but it just makes natural sense to me that if Joey feels ready, they bring him up in a, a transaction tomorrow and, and let him get this whole homestand under his belt before he has to travel. That's what I get a feeling should happen. Uh, but Joey's not been hitting well. We talked about that yesterday. So it'll be interesting to see how they handle that. Because I think at this point, I would rather watch Joey Votto come up here and try and figure it out than watch Jason Vossler continue to not figure it out. I think that's where I'm at on that. Yeah. Unfortunately, it seems like I had that episode of did the Reds find a diamond in the rough with Jason Vossler? And then he immediately stopped being a diamond in the rough. So he, he went back. See, to just, you counteracted my mojo with the <laughs> why is Jason Vossler on this team tweet? You know, you undid it. You broke the spell. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you set him up and I, and I, I knocked him down. Uh, so when, when we look at Joey Votto's return, it, it can't come soon enough and it's going to fix a lot of different things, I think, because you'll be able to play Spencer Steer every day. He bats fifth or sixth. Joey Votto bats fifth or sixth. You're talking about two thirds of the lineup 
then is a dangerous bit. And then the bottom third, like if Jose Barrero can come along, like everybody's in, entitled in, in the game of baseball to have an 0 for 4 day. I, I'm just glad this wasn't an 0 for 4 with a golden sombrero because that seems to have been something he did a lot last year. So I still kind of chalk that up and, you know, it's not really, you know, moving up the ladder, but maybe diagonally a little bit, you know, just a little bit up that way. Um, and then Luke Maley, I, I look, I, I think that Luke Maley is what he is. He's the third catcher. He's the guy that's going to back up Kirk Casale. But if he can give us a hit or two here or there and throwing Ronald Acuna out at second base, I'm all in on that. So the, the bottom third of the lineup is going to do what it's going to do. And was I wrong about Will Benson? Yeah, I was wrong about Will Benson. But hey, you know what? <laughs> Maybe he can bounce back. I, I, I don't know. But the Maybe the way this lineup so. has just been, it's it's been so inspirational, and that's why I say this team is fun. It's frustrating. It's annoying, but it's fun, and you can't not watch. Well, listen, Jeff, we got some injury updates to yesterday that are actually positive. They're not going to have an immediate impact, but uh, they are positive. We're going to talk about that coming up in just a minute, as well as speculate wildly about when we can see some of the other reinforcements uh, arrive from Louisville. But before we get to that, I want to shout out uh, a couple sponsors of today's podcast. Let's talk about uh, Rocket Money, one of the sponsors of today's show. Do you know how much you spend on subscriptions? Do you know how much your subscriptions really cost? Most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions, but the actual total is closer to $200 a month. If you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, you need Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. Uh, they help you monitor your spending and help you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about, and chances are you're one of them. Uh, like that Stars app that you signed up for just to watch one show or uh, that free gaming trial that you never actually used and then forgot about but forgot to cancel. Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you. And for any that you don't want to pay anymore, you just hit the cancel button right there in the app and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's that easy. Rocket Money also helps you manage all of your finances in one place and automatically categorizes your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks a little suspicious. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. You can head to rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB right now to get Rocket Money and help yourself save some bucks. That's rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB to find out more. Also want to take a second and shout out another one of the sponsors of today's podcast, and that is Built Bar. The Built March Madness Tournament is over, and Brownie Batter Puff has won. I know Jeff is excited. Head over to Built.com to snag a box of the best Built Bar flavor as voted by the buyers of Built Bar. So head over there and get yourself a box of Brownie Batter Puffs right now. Uh, you can also get yourself a mixed box of 12 bars so that you can find what your favorite flavor is. You can use the promo code locked on 15 at checkout to save on your next order you can also head to your nearest walmart to find a four bar box in the pharmacy section or head over to sam's club they've got 12 bar boxes in stock right now you know the stats that come along with built bars they're low in calories low in sugar low in carbs and high in protein and here's the best part they are covered in 100 percent real chocolate they're perfect for a post-workout snack something for in between meals or if you just want to feel like you're cheating on your diet and you're not give yourself a built bar go to built.com use the promo code locked on 15 or head to walmart or sam's club near you today to pick up a box or two you will thank me later you can follow the podcast on all platforms, including YouTube. Make sure you click the subscribe and notification bell over there to catch us when we go live or when we post anything extra or special over there. Also, make sure you are following Jeff and I on Twitter so that you can talk baseball with us between shows. You can follow me at S. Offenbaker with two Fs. You can follow Jeff at Jeff Carr. That's Jeff with three Fs. And you can follow the show at Locked on Reds. All right, Jeff, we got some encouraging news uh, on TJ Antone yesterday. Yes. Uh, TJ Antone sent out a tweet saying that his arm, his shoulder is the healthiest he's ever been. And he's going to start throwing a baseball next week. 
This is exciting to me. And look, I know that we have said that TJ Antone is not necessarily a guy that we're counting on here this season, but I think that this shows I, I could see him back maybe late June, early July. I mean, he's got to build up totally, basically have his own spring training at this point. So when he says throwing next week, that's the beginning of that process. It's not going to be like, he's going to be throwing, he's going to be in a rehab game. We'll see him in May. That's not what I'm thinking here, but still, I think that we are going to see him in this bullpen at some point before the all-star break. I mean, let's, let's consider it like this, Jeff, if he's 100% healthy, you have to approach this in your mind. Like for him, it's February 14th. Today is Valentine's day. That is when pitchers and catchers reported to spring training this past year in Goodyear was on Valentine's day. Hope he remembered so, to get his wife some flowers. Absolutely. So for TJ Antone, he's starting from scratch zero day one, yes. first day of camp. It takes the pitcher six to eight weeks to get ramped up this we know. So that's already putting us into late June, early July. I think they'll be cautious with him. They will bring him along slowly coming off his second Tommy John. So let's add another month to that. Now we're talking late July into August. I think that's what's realistic for TJ Antone. Here's the thing that I'm I'm putting TJ Antone and not for the same reasons necessarily, but he's on the same list with one other player in this organization that I have right now, and that's Nick Senzel. Two guys that can give you a lot, that have a lot of talent, that can be impact players if they're healthy, but neither of which am I counting on to do anything. And if they do, that's a bonus. That's icing on the cake. That's something extra that we weren't expecting. But to rely on either one of those guys to plan for either one of those guys, I think would be folly at this point until they yeah. can show that they can get back and be productive and stay healthy. Well, and it's definitely to the point that Nick Senzel's a utility player. He started in left field the other day. And to my knowledge, I don't think he has that. He has done that in his professional career, like at any point. So th that's them saying that as, as long as we can move him around, he'll probably be the right hand of platoon option. Um, hopefully not feeling like a straight platoon because I feel like TJ Friedel and Jake Fraley are kind of above that at this point, but he'll be there as an option for that. He'll be there if they need him in the infield, he can play third, he can play second, he can play short in a pinch, you know, different things like that. So I, I think that it's interesting if, if you look at Nixon Zell, let, let's do this because we've been saying this all off season that yes, we hope Nixon Zell does something, but if he does anything, it's going to be a plus. Let's let's look at it in this regard. Would you rather have who would you rather have on the roster, Nixon Zell, or Kevin Newman? I, mm, I almost if, want to say Kevin Newman. Yeah, and it feels a little recency biased to like like you know pound on Kevin Newman, but yeah, he still provides some decent uh, defense up the middle. He still provides great hitting against left-handed pitching. Don't really think we know that about Nick Senzel at this point. So that's kind of where we are. That's that's like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think it's fair. We're not like overly standing one guy or the other because you know as well as I do, every time he doesn't do something necessarily right or if he gets an out or if he makes an error, I'm just over here going, no one. <laughs> but I know you Nick are. Senzel... I mean, maybe I'm just going Senzel, but it doesn't quite work as well. As it it doesn't. You know, the thing with Senzel is it's almost decision time on him as well. He's got a little over a week remaining, I think, on his rehab assignment. Uh, I can't. Uh, he has options, but I can't imagine when he's ready that they're going to outright him to Louisville to continue be, to work on positions. That'd be a especially. Tough work. It would. Uh, it. You know, I think that. Will Benson needs to head down and work on some things. Yes. I would rather see Nick Senzel healthy, uh, taking the at-bats that are going to Vossler right now. Um, you know, that assumes Joey Votto is back on the team and playing. So, you know, a decision time is coming, and it's going to be interesting to see just how Nick Crawl and the Reds' front office handle these guys coming back from injury because – Lucas Sims is not that far away. Tony Santian is not that far away. Luke Weaver is not that far away. And we've already talked about Joey Votto and Nixon Zell. That's five guys to turn over on this roster. So you have to ask yourself the question right now, who are the five guys you're comfortable with them sending out? It's definitely, as much as I hate to say, it's definitely Benson. I think it would be, it, it would probably have to be a righty. So they would probably look at, 
um, uh, Fairchild. Fairchild, yeah. Uh, and then pitching wise, I think you're definitely sending down, um, Herget. Herget. Trying to think, like, who has options? Does Derek Law have options? Derek Law does not have options. Yeah. So that'd be a tough one. You'd have to deal. But I think Although, it should be him. We talked about this. I think yeah. it should be Derek Law. I don't know that they'll cut him, though. And I don't know that he would accept an assignment to Louisville yeah. in that well, and, regard. And so be, I mean, it's it's going to be Chase it's going to be difficult. It's it's not it's not as it's not as where I'm going with this, Jeff. Is it's not as straightforward as we think right. it is because they are going to try and play some of the options games, and they are going to try and play. You know, who can we keep around to keep some depth? Because what can't happen is what happened last year when they ran out of players. And I know that was extraordinary circumstances, but they have to keep some dudes around. And for me, you know, maybe Reaver San Martin becomes the odd man out. You keep Alex Young as your lefty in the bullpen and Reaver has I'm options. The better of the two. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the tough point is that, yeah, you're right. They're going to play the options game with that because it's not as simple as like it is on MLB the show where it's just like, well, this guy's not performing. So we'll send him to triple a and bring this guy up. Like that's not what we're talking about here. And for those of you, cause I keep seeing these every so often in the comment section, for those of you saying that they're going to send down one of the catchers. No, that's not happening. That, that is a plan. That's something they came up with in January for this entire season. It's about Tyler Stevenson. It's not necessarily about Luke Maley or Kirk Casale. Like those guys are here for Tyler Stevenson and they're not going to mess with that plan. So those are the, you've got three, pretty much three position players right there that are completely untouchable. Uh, so then you look at the other guys who are obviously not being sent down and you kind of narrow it down. It's going to be one of Benson Fairchild or two of Benson Fairchild and, uh, and, and Jason Vossler. But I think they're probably going to do the righty, righty, lefty, lefty deal. You're probably right. And that's probably Jeff, a good place to go ahead and wrap it up for today. I, and, 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 and here's the thing. This is what we're saying this entire episode. The Reds are frustrating. They just finished a road trip one and five. They've got a losing record. And the bullpen is just absolutely making us tear our hair out. But we see it. We mm -hmm. see the end. We see the, the light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to this. And I know that in some movies, you don't want to go toward the light at the end of the tunnel. But in this case, we do. We, we see the end. And the Reds can get there. And it's not that far away. And that's how we're going to end today's podcast. Thank you so much for checking out today's Lockdown Reds podcast. If you are an everyday listener or a, a viewer, make sure you hit us up in the comments section or hit us up on Twitter. Make sure you check out tomorrow's episode where we get you ready for the weekend. I know we're going to have one game under our belt with the Phillies, but we have a four-game set with the Phillies back at Great American Ballpark. Hopefully we're talking about the return of Joseph Daniel Votto. We'll be all over that because we are here every single day. Now, make sure you go check out Locked On Fantasy Baseball as Matt and Dom will help you win your league with daily fantasy analysis to help you on the waiver wire, the trade market, whatever you're looking for. Locked On Fantasy Baseball has you covered. They're just like Locked On Reds. We're free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, because we're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Steve, if we were any less frustrated, we'd probably be, be fans of like the Dodgers or something because I mean, we love our team. We love the Reds. And as much as we're frustrated, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. So what's that mean for you and me? That means we're going to keep watching Louisville because help is on the way. We're going to keep our ears to the ground to hear the rumors. We're going to watch for the transactions. We're going to watch for a uh, waiver availability of some help. And we're going to bring all that information right back here to keep everyone locked on Reds every single day. I'm going to volunteer to pitch for free until they get some other lefties in this bullpen. <laughs>